All right, so here's the situation is we redid this bathroom about seven months. Take two. Seven months times 12. <laughs> All right, so here's the situation. We redid the bathroom about seven years ago, and for the most part, everything is still great, except for the vanity drawer fronts and doors. But since everything else with the vanity is still fine, there's no reason to tear it apart. So the basic idea was, instead of reinventing the wheel, we could use the existing pieces as templates to make new pieces that'll be a lot nicer. All right, let's take them out. So we're going to go through a harder version first, and then a simplified version that uses limited tools and stuff that you could get from your big box store to achieve the same thing. Did he glue them? Can't work in the dark. Once we had everything at the shop, we started by turning on a few lights and then grabbing the material that we thought we might need to make everything. I'm almost chewing the head. <laughs> Um, so now I, actually, let me, I have a piece of paper where I wrote down what I needed. All right, so we got our drawing here. These, so these are all the drawer fronts right here. These, the black pieces are the drawer fronts, which are not a panel. So I'm gonna say at, how do you do the at? At, at seven. So inches. after figuring out the at symbol, I basically went through my SketchUp drawing and marked up the size of every piece that we're gonna need to make. And here's how it breaks down. We're gonna need to make five drawer faces and four doors, which are all frame and panel. For the drawers, it's gonna be pretty easy. It's really just a matter of cutting out some rectangles, but for a couple of them, they're a little bit wider, so we're gonna need to glue up two pieces. The doors for the quote unquote harder version are gonna be frame and panel using tongue and groove, I guess you'd call it joinery. Sliding tenons? I don't know, but like this anyway. So we'll rip out a bunch of strips, create some panels, and then cut in the joinery. All right, let's get to it. Okay, that's what we need. Feeling good? No. This is this. I'm just gonna check things off as I see them. Great idea. So that, that's a drawer face right there. Then there should be another one that's 11 and a quarter by Seven and a quarter. Maybe one this? of these ones. Oh shoot, baby. Uh, uh, a, B, C, D, E. <laughs> so now that we're on the same page with are, our A, this will be C. This is C. Good call. So finally, with all of the confusion seemingly out of the way, we could actually get to work. Starting off by cross cutting our pieces into some chunks that are overly long and then ripping them into some chunks that are overly wide. Put some glue in there. This is the in-out method, which we've explained several times, and in fact, I made a whole animation of it. Let's roll that. Oh, wow, great. So the way that this works is by joining the edge of mating faces where one is always against the fence and the other one is always away from the fence, aka in and out. So that way, if your fence is slightly off of 90, it doesn't matter because the opposing angles are going to offset one another and the face of the two or however many boards you glue together will be coplanar. Oh yeah. That's a nice. That's a butte right there. This one's probably not as much of a butte, but still a butte. That's, that's Finally, before gluing my panels together, the last thing I did was clean up the outside edges on the table saw. That way I'd be clamping against a nice square edge. Uh, I'm gonna do a shuffle board on this last one. Yeah! Oh, oh. How close was that? Uh, we'll have to check the tape. <laughs> I always say, treat your wood like a hot dog, your glue like a mustard. And if you do that, you'll never go wrong. Babe Woodward. Ruth from the Sandlot over here. I never saw the Sandlot. Oh my God. Yeah, that's like one of those movies that I feel like. Where I'm allowed to be like, what? You've never seen the Sandlot? Yeah, and, and like, it has nothing to do with our four year age difference right. or whatever. Like I'm right in the wheelhouse right. for the Sandlot. Yeah, you I just should have, you should have seen it. Somehow it skipped me. I think I maybe saw One Mighty Duck. Oh my God. And that's only because my cousin liked hockey. 
But did you see Angels in the Outfield? Never saw Angels in the Outfield. Were you not a sports? Get this, kid? never saw Rookie of the Year, what? read the book, <laughs> and it's not the movie based off of the book, it's the book based off the movie. <laughs> what about um, Little Giants? Nope, never saw that. I liked sports, never saw Air Bud. I didn't see Air Bud. That's good. That one stunk from what I heard. <laughs> Ladybugs, Ladybugs, never saw it. Wait, what? Nope. I thought we talked about that. I nope. think we have seen it. Never seen it. Is that it's Rodney Dangerfield, yeah. right? That's, didn't we talk about that? Maybe, no. Maybe that was me and Alex. Maybe. That's your other girlfriend. <laughs> feeling even, feeling good. Okay, so now we gotta start cutting out our rails and our styles. So we need 16 total rails and styles. We can get two of our 26 and an eighth inch pieces out of here, two more out of here, that takes care of those. We get two of our C's out of here. I'm gonna cut those before I start marking everything else out because otherwise I'm gonna forget since I have already a lot of marks on this board, so. With everything ripped, the next thing we needed to do was mill everything to its final thickness. Now this is a step that we're gonna be able to skip in the simpler version since we can just buy pre-milled lumber. But for these guys, we're gonna run each piece across the joiner just to make sure that it's perfectly flat and then use the planer to get everything down to three quarters of an inch thick. Go ahead and mark this puppy up right there at seven and... All right, let's cut those. So what, you're, you're marking them now to what? 18 and 17. In these next few shots, what I'm doing is marking out and cutting our rails and styles to their final length. And I'm gonna use a hypothetical panel with some simpler dimensions to explain what's going on. So let's pretend that we had a door that's 20 inches tall by 10 inches wide. Well, I'm actually gonna build the door at this point slightly too big because I wanna cut it down to its final size a little later. So we're gonna to aim to make the door 20 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. In other words, a quarter of an inch oversized in each direction. For our styles, the vertical pieces, we can cut them right to 20 and a quarter inches, just like we want. And for our rails, we'll need them to be the finished dimension, which was 10 and a quarter inches, minus five and a half, that's the width of both styles, which the rail is sandwiched between, and then plus the length of the tenons. And that comes to a grand total of six and three quarters inches. Now, the math isn't particularly hard, but what's more troublesome is when you get into eighths or sixteenths of an inch, and when you have multiple doors that are all slightly different sizes. They just came from different, like, rough what, uh, what, are you, what are you marking? The height of my, this will be, oh, buddy. Okay. I'm marking a line, okay? That's a half an inch, bub. <laughs> See, so now I can cut to the perfect stinking height. And what is this? That's my question. Oh! Well, this is just a... Yeah, I know, but what are you setting up? That's what I'm about to tell you! <laughs> I'm gonna cut in my grooves. Oh. Yowza! Now, in theory, we should be able to get this in one cut. Why? Because we're removing a quarter of an inch, and the blade is an eighth of an inch wide, if my math is right. I said in theory it should work. <laughs> That's pretty good though. Let's just. Actually, let me interrupt for a second to jump back in time to a few days ago when I made the panels that are eventually gonna go into the grooves that we're cutting right now. And honestly, this was all pretty straightforward. Really, the only unique thing was, since the panels are so thin and I wanted to conserve material, I used this featherboard from Rockler to resaw the pieces into thinner pieces. Once that was done, I could glue them up and then plane them down to slightly less than a quarter of an inch. And the reason that I did this beforehand was because that I knew that it was going to slow us down a lot if we had to do it while we were trying to get the rest of the doors and drawers done. Okay, let's jump back to the present. So after tapping the fence around a few times and making some practice cuts on my scrap piece, I finally had it where I wanted it. So I locked it down and cut the grooves into all 16 Outside. pieces. Uh, so now I'm gonna just mark in a half inch this way. This is gonna be for creating our tenon. So basically we just want it the same height. That seems pretty good. Give it a whirl. That looks pretty good to me. Give it a whirl. Okay. Give it a whirl.
Okay, so while we were doing that, we realized we were kind of doing things backwards. We were making the flat cut first and then the vertical cut second. So then off camera, we kind of decided that we should probably do it in reverse order. So we reset. All right, so with a solid game plan and a little more setup, we were in business and I went about cutting my 16 tenons on my eight rail pieces. We've got all our rails and styles cut. Here I've just got them dry fit together. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can figure out how big to make my panels. So I know that I've got a half inch deep in each groove. So this opening right here is at six and three quarters. So that means it's seven and three quarters. That's as big as it can be. So I'm gonna back that off by like three eighths of an inch. What did I say it was? <laughs> Minus three eighths of an inch, so. Turn me right, that is seven and six eighths minus three eighths. All right, so seven and three eighths. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna calculate the size for the rest of those doing the same thing, just. Uh, that doesn't look right. This seems way too short. We figured it out. It's cause on that first one, remember I was, uh, I measured the gap, then I added the inch for the grooves, then I subtracted three eighths, and then in my head I just kept doing that, but I was just measuring the gap and subtracting three eighths, so I was basically making the panel three eighths of an inch smaller than whatever the opening is. What I need to do is what I did on the first one, which is add an inch, subtract three eighths, or just add five eighths. I guess I'll just re-measure them, add five eighths, cut. Okay. okay, now that we're all thoroughly confused, let's do that. Yeah. So after double, triple, and quadruple checking everything to make sure that it was right, I went ahead and cut my panels to length and then to width. And as you're going to see a little later, when I make the simplified version of these doors, they require a lot less math. Oh, get in there. I think we're good. In these shots, I'm using some leather dye to stain my panels black before we glue them up. And this might seem redundant since we're going to ultimately finish them with black polyurethane. But the reason was, I was worried the panel might shift over time and end up exposing a part that wasn't finished. So I wanted to have a nice base of black everywhere, kind of as a safety net, I guess. Now you, you can never give me shit for getting glue on your table anymore. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Just watch. You'd be surprised what I can give people shit for. We should probably let these dry up for a couple minutes before we uh, start gluing anything, eh? Let's get these out of clamps. So much for the in out method. There's I our found culprit. the culprit. Oh God. It looks like you're gonna rip your fingernail off. Here's a thought. You know, how, like a little hangnail? Yeah, I know them all. You know every single one? <laughs> all of them. Have you ever thought like if you have a little hangnail and you, and you start to pull on it mm -hmm. and then it, it pulls Oh, no, I had never thought like it just keeps all the way up your arm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. yeah it's like a piece of floss. I'll plane this side down. How, how wide are they? Not 15 inches. What do you, so what are we doing? We're cutting them a little bit big right now. Yeah. And then you're going to use the actual drawers from your home to, to get them to final size. Right. So why aren't you just leaving them where uh, they are right now? Cause I want all like square panels so that when I start working with that, I don't have like one wonky edge like this. I don't know. I probably could do that. I just, I like to overdo things. Well, you're really wasting my damn time. Things I should be doing. Like what? Name one thing you should be doing that's more important than this. Uh. Exactly. <sighs> By this point, the leather dye on our panels was dry enough that we could go ahead and assemble and glue all four of those. You remember those commercials? There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. <laughs> yeah. Those were fun. I'm gonna break off the glue. Do it. Post an oddly satisfying video. Oh. It's not even odd. It's just satisfying. Did you ever used to watch How I Met Your Mother? Uh, yeah. That's a fun show, right? <laughs> Just like Big Bang Theory. Have you seen that? I've watched like probably one episode. No, yeah. Like, this isn't funny. Yeah, that's a fun show. 
I don't believe you. <laughs> I've never seen one actually. <laughs> of either of those? I, no, I've seen How I Met Your Mother. Uh, I've never seen Big Bang, Big Bang. Brother. <laughs> I think you're mixing uh, Big Bang. How I Banged Your Mother? Probably, probably can't put that on there. That's one down. I'm gonna take a picture of these and send them to Dolores and tell her that this is what we're actually doing for the bathroom. See what she says about it. You don't think she'll like it? I don't know, I'm gonna like really sell it. Like, looks good, right? All right, let's see what she says. She's being nice. Cause maybe she thinks like, oh, this is in progress. No, I think she thinks it's... No, I think she... All right, so you like the two-tone? What will the wood look like with the finish? See, so she thinks that... <laughs> she, she knows doesn't... it's gonna be black. Okay. Will it match the mirror? I'm gonna say, no, this is finished. Black panels, oak frame. Looks good, right? You're just gassing her up. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have put looks good, right? That makes it too obvious that, I'm, that I lied. God dang it. It was a piece of wood. Oh. Okay, enough goofing around. Let's get so back to work. These are all sanded on the front side. They're ready to go. Now we got to cut them to their final size. So what we're actually going to do is use the drawer faces that we pulled off of the cabinet. That way we know we're cutting them exactly the same as what they were. We got them all cut to finished length. Now we cut them to finished width, doing the exact same thing. We'll use them to set up the fence. And now we're gonna do literally the exact same thing that we did to the drawer fronts, only using our doors. All right, all of our drawer faces and our doors are now cut to size. And I'm gonna start transferring the hardware from the old doors to the new ones. You can see I've got everything labeled. A W for wide, these are the wider doors, and right top, right bottom. So everything's organized, I can transfer it all. Here I was looking for an easy way to transfer the hinge location from my old doors to the new ones. And the best idea that I had was to clamp them together, align the best that I could, and then drill through the center marks that was left by the Forstner bit to make a pilot hole where the new cups could go. Then to mark my door handles, I'm just gonna set it where I want it, hold it there, and use a self-centering bit to drill out some screw holes. I had noticed that the old doors and drawers had this little chamfer that went all the way around the perimeter, and you could definitely just use some sandpaper to break the corners, but I figured since I'd come so far, I'd go ahead and keep matching the old look. And now we can go ahead and start finishing. So after sanding everything up to 220, I'm going to use some black polyurethane, and you could brush this on with a foam roller, which works just fine, but is a little bit slower, or spray it on if you've got a sprayer. So because we don't want to actually go to Home Depot right now with social distancing and everything, rather than going there and getting stuff, we'll just kind of recreate our own things that are equivalent to what you can get there. So let's just kind of online shop and see what we would have been able to get if we could go out in public. Is your goal to make it, to do it as close as possible? Yeah, to just the... to show that you could do it. Yeah, so like- So I guess, yeah, we'll do the two inch runs and also those are a lot cheaper. They're like almost, half the price yeah so yeah. okay so, oh wait these are only quarter inch quarter inch thick yeah we need something three quarters or wait a minute one inch by two inch <clears throat> boom here we go 98 cents a foot a linear foot yeah all right and then we're gonna need um like quarter inch plywood what else do we need dowels, dowels. we're gonna have those let's just make sure Hopefully I have dowels already. Otherwise we may actually have to go. Brave the- I ain't going. Me neither. Do they have a doweling jig there? I have one, but- I bet I'm sure they'd, I would imagine that they do. I think that's it. No, yeah. All right, well, let's go home. 
All right, so we are back from the Home Depot. We got our poplar that's two inches wide and three quarters of an inch thick. We got some quarter inch plywood. So for these guys, we don't need to rip or mill or do anything. We basically just need to cut them to length. So let's use baby a miter. Heavy. All right. Dead nuts. <laughs> What would be the best way to accurately cut something that's too long? Uh, you know, I was gonna put a stop block. You know, I'm gonna assume that people that want to do it this way, like if you're really trying to do it the cheapest way possible, you probably don't have like a whole miter stand set up where you're gonna accurately... Hang on. Hang on. Okay, so I was gonna, I thought I had an epiphany where I was gonna set up like a tall stop fence like this that I could just keep hitting but my pieces aren't that long. And I don't really want to take this apart. This is not my miter saw, so I'm just gonna mark them. I'll be, do my best to be consistent. I'll cut two of them at uh, 12 and we'll make it where they're 12 tall and we'll say like eight wide. I'm also gonna assume the person probably doesn't have this. Man, that thing kicks on, huh? Okay, so we just cut all our pieces to length. Math's a lot easier for these ones. Basically, we just cut this to how big we want our doors to be in the tallness dimension, so 10 inches, uh, or 12 inches. We decided we wanted it 10 inches this way, so these pieces are just six inches. Two plus six plus two. What is it? I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out real quick. Two plus six plus two. 10. So we're gonna join them with dowels. I'm just gonna label each one so that one, one, two, two. And I'm actually gonna clamp them together and, and mark up where I'm gonna put the dowels. So let me go grab some clamps. Then to join them, we'll use our dowels. We got some quarter inch dowels from the deeps. And I got this doweling jig, which can do a quarter inches. Just line that up with my mark. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Whoop. How proud are you right now? I'm a proud papa. Almost like a cabinet door frame. Yeah, it does kind of look like that. Yeah. Now that you mention it. Oh man, let's <sighs> get those. And scene. All right, just got this guy out of clamps. It's all clean. So now we have to cut in a rabbit for the back panel. <laughs> About six and three quarters, eight and three quarters. Because I'm not using a table saw, one of those. I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut this out to show you how unimportant it is to get a clean edge on this panel. I'm gonna just butcher this thing probably. Square peg is not gonna fit into a round hole. So we're gonna have to uh, do a little marky mark in the funky bunch where we're gonna round these over. All right, I'm very uh, poorly drawing out some quarter circles and I will remove most of this material with the jigsaw as well. Yeah. Let's just go like that, let's do some facets. Okay, and action. All right, we've got our panel to shape. Everything is sanded. To put it in, we're just gonna use glue. If you have uh, some like brad nails or you could just use regular nails and hammer them in, that might be a little bit extra, but I'm gonna just use glue and then we'll let it glue up without even clamping or anything and then we can test it later and see how strong it is. I did 
get one. Look oh, at that. Good God. Can you see it? Yeah. It's brutal. I think that ought to do it. Yep. All right. Okay, rolling. Okay, so we have our drawer faces and doors all finished. This is where everything could go wrong, I think, potentially. But the basic idea is, rather than like the traditional way that you would space drawer faces in order to mount them on the boxes, we're just gonna try to use the existing holes that the screws made going through the boxes and into the faces and transfer those onto the new ones. And in theory, everything should line up the old way. I had everything labeled before, so this was drawer face B. Let's just find R, that's A. Here's B, this is right side up. So we're just gonna lay it right on it. I'm gonna use this like clamping square thing, which came in kind of handy for this to just perfectly line them up. All right, that feels good. Confident in that. <laughs> Very mildly. God, now I'm so worried that I didn't put it face down again. Let's check the footage, because I don't want to unclamp it. This is right side up. This is right side up. Right side up. All right, we checked the footage. I had done it correctly, so now I can go ahead and transfer those marks. And we'll find out if that actually worked in a little bit. Let's get our screws started. A little. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna drill in a little bit just to enlarge the hole. Then I'm gonna back them out so that the cabinet can sit flush. And now, start sending them home. That's definitely on there. Whether it's positioned right, we will find out when we get them home. What's your uh, what's your bet on it? 50-50. No, um, I think they're gonna be pretty close. The tolerances on these seem to be like a little bit looser than the type of drawers that we normally do, which are inset. So, but then there's also like zero adjustability on this hardware, so that makes it kind of one shot. But if it doesn't work, we'll just, take the drawer faces off and do it kind of the traditional way where we'll have some spacers with us, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. We'll see. Finally, the last thing that we could do before taking them home to install was reinstall all of the hinge hardware onto the doors. All right, that's the last piece of hardware installed. Let's go install these puppies back in the bathroom. Mm. Moment of truth. I can't even see. Yeah. Very sounded good. Boom. Ah! Oh. All right, so these ones seem to be good. It's super dark. Nice gap. Yeah, it's hard to see in here, but I'll show some finished shots after, and I'll, I'll bring some lights so that you can take my word for it, or so you don't have to take my word for it. This one definitely needs adjusting. And with a little fine tuning, everything turned out really well. Now, I know the difference, especially on camera, between the before and after is pretty subtle. Honestly, it's the sort of thing that most people might not even notice. But that's kind of the point. I mean, we really liked the way that the vanity looked. It just wasn't holding up well. And it was apparent that it was only going to get worse. So hopefully these are going to hold up a lot better for years to come. I almost forgot we got to test this panel. It just falls apart. <laughs> All right, well, it held up to that first one. Let's try another hit. I mean, we're not really testing the strength of this. We know this is obviously gonna be playing strong, so we need to get a direct hit here. Maybe we should just like set it up between something and just whack it. Just take a whack at it. Well, we broke it. The, the glue doesn't fail. Basically, the veneer failed, I guess you would say, because it mm -hmm. delaminated in order to break. Yep. So, for normal use, I think you'll be fine. Just don't take a dead blow hammer to your panels and you'll be okay. I open all my cabinets with dead blow hammers. All right, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.